Good evening and welcome to the Talk Right Podcast. I'm your host, Wayne Stennett, and tonight is Hot Tropics. Uh, my co-host, Nick Sullivan, is going to take over and introduce our guests, all tropical authors from our group, and some really, really talented writers. <laughs> take it over, Nick. Okay, one second. Let me turn off the YouTube in the background, which is cross-talking at me. And all righty. Today we have on Hot Tropics, we have Tom Turner, Don Rich, Mandy Miller, and Nicholas Harvey. And we also hear that Douglas Pratt is searching for internet and he may join us as well. <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be sort of fun. We, we could ask all of you what your books are and your series are, but uh, I, I'm, I think folks would be interested in where you are and what, what the weather's like. Uh, so let, let me start with- uh, Oh yeah, this uh, will be fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I'll, I'll quickly go with me. Uh, it was 26 degrees here in uh, New Jersey, up in the Lake Country here, and now it was 72. Uh, Tom, I bet you it's a little warmer where you are. Delray Beach, 85. Oh. <laughs> Not well, too shabby. Sunny. And uh, Don, uh, where are you at currently, and what's it like out? Charlottesville, Virginia, and it's 83 and sunny. Nice. Well, let's see. Mandy Miller, I'll wait for you to unmute. And let me skip ahead to Nicholas Harvey, who's in a very interesting place. I'm in uh, St. Martin, the uh, Dutch side of the uh, St. Martin Island in the Caribbean. And it's uh, probably about 76 right now. It was probably a high of about 79, 80 today. And it's very nice. Awesome. That's the high every day year round. <laughs> Pretty much. And Wayne, I think most people know where you're from, but if we get some new folks in, where are you currently and what's it like out? Right now I'm in Beaufort, South Carolina. It's uh, Today it was in the low 80s, probably in the low 70s now. Sunny, beautiful day. Tomorrow I'll be in Titusville, Florida, where I'll be uh, meeting my great-grandson for the very first time. He's going to be born tomorrow afternoon sometime. Oh, wow. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Well, I want to round this out with the other end of the scale. Uh, Mandy, where are you at and what's going on outside the window? Um, well, if you wait long enough in the spring in Colorado, it'll be four seasons within the hour. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, closing in on 600 inches of snow for the winter. And it's been snowing right up until two seconds ago. And now the sun is out, but that's only going to last a minute or two. <laughs> that's just a tease. <laughs> Now, Steamboat Springs, is there a steamboat? Well, that's a, a story. Um, there, there is not a steamboat because obviously it's landlocked. But when the French trappers came through here in the uh, latter part of the 19th century, when th they were coming into what is now the town, they heard this noise like a steamboat. And it turns out it was the hot springs running and it makes this noise mm -hmm. of the steamboat. We have a lot of... Um, naturally fed hot springs here and so they named it steamboat springs and that became the railroad stop because of the noise the hot springs make wow is there any kind of maybe like volcanic activity deep down that's causing that like why where why um, in particular well, do you have hot springs there are very old mountains here the mountains here are more uh, rounded on the tops as <laughs> opposed to down near vale and breckenridge and the the lower part of the middle part of the state they're very jaggy these are very old <laughs> mountains so i assume there's some sort of old <clears throat> volcanic land there but there are hot springs everywhere around here which is nice for sitting around in <laughs> uh, but yep cool all right, Wayne, you got any questions for our particular panelist or, or do you have a topic, a hot topic for hot tropics? Well, there's nothing on YouTube at present, but uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, we're all planning a, a, a sort of a get together just before Nink and uh, several of us are going to be there. So that, that might be something we could talk about. Yeah, that's true. Uh, for those watching this, uh, there is a, a group called Novelists Incorporated, but everyone just calls it NINC. And uh, they have a get together in September in Florida. So if you love tropical authors and you want to see a bunch of us, uh, uh, we will be in the St. Pete area. I don't know the exact dates. Wayne, do you happen to remember them? September 20th, uh, roughly? September 20th through the 23rd, I think is the conference. Yeah. 
Wednesday so we may try to do a, a like we maybe go to a book signing or something uh, for a whole bunch of us or just a pub uh, crawl or a pub crawl <laughs> Yeah, one, honestly, one of the we, authors that comes every year is a pilot, and he takes authors up uh, the days before the conference starts, Monday and Tuesday, and early Wednesday. He'll take people up flying around just for the fun. Oh wow! Yeah, so you, you got to get on. You got to get online and online for that. Well, shoot, that might be a reason to come <clears throat> a little earlier. But yeah, we could if if uh, fans of hot uh, of uh, tropical authors want to come on down, we we can sign your books at a. <laughs> at a brewer a brewery just as easily as we can sign at a bookstore so we'll figure something out is it is it sold out nick do you know is it uh can i still sign up for it and uh, do you know i actually don't know i uh wayne do you know if the, I, they're I don't close think... they're close to sold out if not sold out already the, the registration opened oh god three months three weeks ago oh really and they sell out fast are you a member tom yeah, I am. Um, I don't know why it just, I, I just didn't pull the trigger on it, but I'll, I'll try them later today or tomorrow. Yeah. Check it out and see. If yeah. That'd still. be great. I, I know that the block of rooms that they had reserved is gone and they're oh. putting overflow people in uh, Rumfish, which is right next door and part of the same resort. But, uh, and it really, a really nice hotel. Rumfish is great. I stayed there last year cause I was late. I was tardy getting signed up but um i what they'll do tom is if you if they're full now it'll open again for a very brief period of time as people okay. drop out and change plans or what have you they'll, uh, they'll have a few spots open so got it so i can get on a waiting list or, or you know be told when there's a, a spot they don't do a waiting list they'll just suddenly yeah. say in in the group email registration is open again and then oh. two or three hours later they'll close it Gotcha. So you got to okay. be ready. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Uh, Britnick is in St. Martin, and I keep looking over his shoulder to see if I can make out Saba as the light changes. But yeah, we, uh, got, uh, we got a bank of cloud on the horizon. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, we had a bit of rain earlier today, and actually, it was raining offshore. <clears throat> had very little rain on the island since we've been here which is getting on for five weeks now and um but normally every day you can see saber just about uh to the right of that palm tree behind me um yeah. and it's beautiful because it's just shaped like that right because it's a volcano yeah if and, you're uh, if you're interested and you're watching this go on to google and look up saba add the word island because there's a company called saba but saba island it's just the most amazing place on this planet. Uh, and uh, Britnick's going to be heading over there. When are you heading over there? Yeah, in two weeks we go. Um, we're leaving on Friday, going for a, um, an overnight stay over there, diving on the Saturday morning. So have a chance to go look around. You know, it's a, it's a neat place. Someone should write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all those islands in that, in that northeast uh, corner of the Caribbean, just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and you were, were in Anguilla? Yeah, Anguilla. Anguilla's um, like literally, we were on a beach. Um, so, so Saint Martin. For those who don't know, Saint Martin is split um, between Dutch and French side. And when you go across the border, there's armed guards and all these gates. And, no, there's not. There's nothing. You just drive down the road, and all of a sudden, you're in the French <laughs> pit. You're in the Dutch pit. The islanders. Uh, it was actually we were chatting with an islander, and they're like, "We don't care. Which we don't call it French or Dutch. We just it's the island." And um, so anyway, we drove uh, north and we were on a on a beach and looking at uh, this stretch of land out um, that looked like it was probably a couple of miles over there sort of thing. And uh, Cheryl's like, uh, so what part of the island is that? I thought the island went this way. I'm like, that's Anguilla. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> and uh, so the, the ferry ride was uh, 25 minutes, uh, which... Uh, <laughs> Ten of that is idling out of the uh, marina to to get going. When we uh, did that tall ship cruise, mm. is a four hundred foot four masted schooner left uh, St. Martin at what? What was it? Nine or ten o'clock? No, it's about noon, right? And we literally our first stop was Anguilla, and we didn't arrive there until the next morning. They just went out in the ocean and just sailed around and sailed around and 
<laughs> the, the whole trip about wasn't where you wasn't where you going. It's how you get in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. We enjoyed Anguilla a lot. We went diving. Um, uh, vigilant divers actually shout out to Rob super guy, English chap over there who uh, runs a really uh, neat uh, little dive up um, right off the beach in this little cove. And uh, it was a pretty rough day. And, uh, and he was like, oh, we'll go out. And uh, we dove a, a wreck. They've got about, I think he said seven wrecks. They put down as artificial reefs around the island. Um, and there's, there's a ton of little islands. There's uh, Sandy Island, which is the one we actually did a reef dive really close to. Um, and Sandy Island is literally that. It's sort of a bunch of sand that's sort of maybe five feet above the water. And on there is some scrub and a restaurant and a bar. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the and best. They, oh, yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, it was really rough and the waves were rolling when we were going. But they do the tours out there and take people out and stick them in deck chairs. And apparently it's a, a pricey endeavor to spend the day oh. there. But uh, but it looked pretty good. Uh, Don, I want to ask you a question here. I've, I had some notes. Uh, your books take place in uh, um, the... Uh, the Eastern, Eastern Shore. Shore of Virginia. So did, did you spend a lot of time there? What is your what is your connection? It's a fascinating area. I drove through there on my way to Norfolk once and thought, what is this place? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, if it was Florida, there would be condos everywhere. And instead, it's cornfields uh, and soybean fields and cotton fields that run right down to the water. Um, no, I just I go over there every every now and then. Uh, and try and get over there and then uh, also get over to the western side of the Chesapeake. And so I've got a new series that will be coming out uh, later this year that's uh, based on the uh, Tidewater area. Oh, wow. Yeah, totally new. And uh, I'll have a rapid release of about three different books uh, to launch that series. But well, Nick, I you just had a new release, didn't you? We, have t we got two Nicks. They're Nick, Nick, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's talking to the one who just had a new release, Nick. Oh, that, that's true. <laughs> well, <laughs> this I don't know. Called, I mean, this is, called, is, is it a Tuesday? Called. You might have one. Uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in these upper echelon technical uh, videography groups, this is called a segue. A segue. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> But I wanted to know the title of this of this new uh, series that Don Rich is, is doing. And then I'll, uh, I'll segue. It, it, it's pr the preliminary title, uh, the working title is the RIVA series. R-I-V-U-H? R-I-V-A-H. R -I -V -A -H. He, oh, around yeah. here, the uh, they call it going down to the river. Going down to the river. Yeah. I so love that. Where it's it's cooler uh, in the in the summer and, of course, the... Uh, the water is melted by then, which is nice. <laughs> I, I'm going to ask a little west of there in the uh, Shenandoah Valley. Yep. Oh, I know. Yeah, I, I can see Afton from uh, my front yard. Mm. All uh, right. Britain, now let's segue. Okay, we'll segue. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll hold up the book here. Yes, this just came out, and uh, I want to tell you something that I think is cool. I mean, reviews are great, sales are great, but something I thought that was really cool. When I was in South Caicos, uh, the book takes place, part of it in South Caicos, which is real backwater compared to Grand Turk or Provo in Turks and Caicos. So when I went on to Google Maps to look up things, there was nothing that some of them had no pictures for stores and for locations, a uh, place called the Boiling Hole and the old Coast Guard Station. So I started doing reviews for everything and putting up my own photos. The book came out last Tuesday and all week I've been getting notifications from Google Maps. Your reviews are making a difference. 50,000 people have seen your photo, <laughs> this and that. And then I started getting emails and people checking and going, hey, that photo in your newsletter, that was on Google Maps. I'm like, oh yes. So there's something fun. If you ever uh, uh, set a book somewhere, <laughs> And you use a location, go in and put a review so that people can find it. That's, I've just added a review, uh, a spot on Google Maps in Cayman, and it says Nora's Shack. 
for oh, my yes. characters. Has a check. And I, and it's been submitted. I'm waiting to see if it actually stays there or gets kicked out. But oh, kind of. Oh, I need to submit Jesse's Island. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, that'd uh, be cool. Just to brag on Nick a little bit, I'm listening to the audio book, which he has. I am some, too. Some uh, some punter read for him, and um, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> in case you don't know, he he's a narrator by trade, so he does a rather good job of it. And um, the descriptions of the islands and the history that's built into the story is uh, absolutely outstanding. It's really really cool. It makes you feel like you're sitting there, and there's a lot of local characters. Uh, uh, embedded in the story, some people we uh, we both know actually, at, at, and yes. some, is... some real, some yeah, Tukes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, everything. He was so happy. Yeah, <laughs> we have so a friend happy. Tom Tewksbury, and yeah. he's helped with the, the the TCI refund. And I had a mooring ball repair thing, and I was like, "Do you mind being in this book?" Because Tukes is an often is just an awful, I mean, awful nice nickname i really yeah. want to use it and yeah he was thrilled putting yeah. people in is a lot of fun you got to get the permission first but yeah i just put my old boss in my new book did you like him uh, yeah he's a <laughs> he's a great <laughs> guy <enjoy>. actually <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, he's a great guy and we're really really good friends um he's the uh, now runs track house racing in nasca and um uh, we worked together for for twice actually during my time in racing and uh yeah i've made him this total asshole guy in my book they're doing pretty good <laughs> this season too <laughs> yeah tra track house are doing great my mate ross yeah. is second in points right now he's he's doing well well doug pratt has a little bit of internet he's actually watching the show yeah, he's in a bar. He can't get on the call. He's in he a just bar. texted me. He's in a bar. <laughs> and he's, he's got okay internet, but it's loud. So, uh... <laughs> Well, have, ask him to chip in. Hey, Tom, you have a new book out, right? I, I know because it had an awesome cover, and I put it into the Tropical Authors <laughs> newsletter the other day. You can never go wrong with a babe in a bathing suit on the cover. It did what well. do you say? What do you say, Mandy? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. That sounds kind of like That's, a bodice ripper sort of thing. No, it's not. And I'm sorry if it's not as sexist. I promise I'm not like that. I'm not that kind of guy. But it's actually a woman who's on a boat, which is part of the story. So it sort of melds in and and Anyway, I've gotten some good good comments on it. Sorry, well, Tom, a, I didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a gorgeous filter on it that it made it sort of look uh, yes. like I, I was like, oh, what what time period? <laughs> it had a classy kind of, you know, I'm watching Perry Mason right now, but uh, I'm sure yours is <laughs> modern time. But it it sort of transported me. It kind of looked like one of those noir books. Well, well and, and, you should. And the, at me, yes, but if you look really closely, you'll see that there's some sort of palm leaves off to the side. Now, that's in the middle of, they're on their way to a place called Harbor Island. And it's in the middle of the ocean. Why are there palm leaves? I, I never spotted that <laughs> until, oh. until it was a done deal. Oh. But it's like, what? Why is that there? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh Wayne, do Del, we have any Delray Deadly? Oh. If you if you Delray Deadly. Yeah, you got nothing better to do, read it. Oh, wait, it's wait. Fun. Looks like Wayne's got something. Wayne's got something. I thought he was holding up Delray Deadly, but no, it's Fish On. Fish On is uh the 25th novel in the Jesse McDermott series. And I'm gonna have to rephrase that. It's the 25th novel in the old Jesse McDermott series. Yeah. The first novel in the new Jesse McDermott series will be in November. And that's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, let, let our viewers know what, what are you, what, what's the, what's the hook on this new series? Well, Jesse spent 20 years in the Marine Corps and military gets one month a, a year, uh, annual leave. And he always goes someplace nice and exotic and gets into trouble. And his first leave is when he get, gets out of boot camp where he just met this young guy much shorter than him with red hair, whose name was Jim Thurman. And then uh, 
halfway through boot camp, he becomes Rusty Thurman. And it's it's, mm -hmm. it's just it's going to be so much fun just revisiting all these real things that he is always <laughs> referenced in the books, but you never meet the people like Rusty's parents and Jesse's parents and uh, Jesse's grandparents, Mam and Pap. They actually have names. And <laughs> so what age is Jesse at this time? In the first book, he is 17 years old. Wow. Straight straight out of high school, first right into boot camp, same as I did. And all the Nick, Nick and I were talking about it. The audiobook's going to be absolutely off the hook. <laughs> when that bus pulls up at, at the receiving barracks at Paris Island, that drill instructor gets on and starts yelling and screaming, and all these people <laughs> just all these drill instructors yelling at one time and Nick's going to master this so that you can hear all their different voices yelling different commands and stuff at the same yeah, time. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to bouncing three separate tracks. So they come out as one <laughs> audio file. <laughs> uh, I've not, done it before. In it's it's going to be classic. It will be a classic. You're not too far from Paris Island now, are you Wayne? Eight miles. Wow. On a clear day, I can hear the rifle range. My mom lives in Tennessee, and on a clear day, I can hear rifle ranges too. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, on cloudy days, rainy days, it's it's backyard. Backyard. You, remember, you remember the movie Shooter with uh, Mark Wahlberg? Mm -hmm. And he, he, they're driving, he's got the little Indian guy with him, and he wakes up and says, Where are we? And he says, We're in Tennessee, patron state of blowing shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember playing, I was a kid on my tricycle going around and around in our little, the end of our driveway and hearing a big boom from down, uh, down in the holler and a snap and a whole bunch of branches came loose. And we later Whoa. found shotgun shells down there. They were deer hunting, Whoa. shooting uphill. <laughs> Why don't you have an accent? Um, I, well, I, I've tried to strip it. Uh, okay. as, as an actor, but my mother is from Kansas, from Mennonite stock. Okay. okay. And my dad is from Tennessee, but he's from the old Callahan family. So they, they were, you know, they, they had those ah. big houses and stuff. So the neither, neither of my parents had a very strong accent, uh, which helped. Yeah. But when I went to acting school, they're like, why do you say insurance? <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, <laughs> That's the way syllable it. okay all yeah. right yeah nick actually does have an accent the the persona that we hear all the time is just him acting <laughs> <laughs> well i kind of i i sort of think about having a beer down in tennessee when i start one of wayne's books and it comes back just a little gotcha. uh, you all have sense to me i grew up <laughs> in west virginia and when, when we moved to florida i had a really thick accent and i was i was teased mercilessly so Fortunately, I was still young. I was only 12 years old, so I was able to lose that accent hmm. to a certain degree. But sometimes I still wash my hands in water. My, mo my mother says wash, <laughs> which I thought was a Midwest thing. My dad didn't say it. Hmm. Mandy, where are you from originally? And and I want to hear about uh, your your series because I, I don't have we had you on before. No, I've just been toiling away here in absentia. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, where are you from originally? Actually, and, oh, go ahead. I'm from Edinburgh, Scotland, and I don't have an accent, but wow. I used to. Um, so I did have an accent. Um, so can you can you turn it on? Oh yeah, that's fair. When I get out of rehab on Sunday, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> uh, me and the Easter Bunny might have a a, a little chat. Um, so yeah, I'm from Scotland originally, but I've lived all over the, all over the place. Um, obviously I lived a long time in Florida, which is where the books are set. At least the Grace series, the Grace Luck series, the first two are out. Uh, the third one yesterday, I put the end on the first draft. So hey. I guess that's progress. Lots to do still, but, um, so there's that series and, There'll maybe be, I have one draft of a book written in another series from one of the characters from the Grace series. So if you've read the books, 
the Vinny character, the mobster landlord Kneebreaker, yeah. um, he gets his own series. Um, so the first book is written, it's called Invincible. Um, but on mm -hmm. Wayne and Nick's advice, I thought it was better to have another Grace book, at least one more, before I got back to that. So that's kind of where I'm at with with those two. But I, I anticipate that, that the Vinny series is different. It's not as noir. It's not as dark. It's much more f jokey and fun. Um, and so it's it's kind of a different tone. Where, the knee, where were you the knee Florida, break is the light books. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the knee What's that? books. The knee breaker books are the light books. <laughs> yeah, right. Right, exactly. Of course. What's that, Tom? Um, where in Florida did you live? Uh southeast. So uh many years ago I went to the University of Miami uh sure. to undergraduate, which is a whole how I got there is a whole long story. But um and then I moved away and I came back much later and lived in uh, Miami for a while and then mostly in Broward County. So um, Fort Lauderdale around there, which is gotcha. where the books are set. Gotcha. That's where By the I way, practiced Edinburgh for a long is time. One of, is one of the great cities there I is. I beg your pardon? Edinburgh, one of the great cities there is. It is. I love yeah, it. it's it's quite cleaned up in Tony now compared to when I was a kid. It was, it was quite gritty <laughs> was uh, when really? I was growing up. When did you leave? Uh, college, but um, so yeah. When I <laughs> when I went to to college, I at the last moment left Scotland and came to the states, and and then never left after that. Um, so yeah, I might need to reach out to you uh, because on the advice of many of my author friends, I'm going to finally write a prequel. And uh, I had my uh, one of my two main characters, Boone Fisher, went to the University of Miami after wow. his summer job working as a, a aquarium cleaner at uh, Gatlinburg. Um, and I know very little about it. I just knew some of the uh, 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 majors they had there that I thought would be good. So I, I might beg you for a little bit of information about about the, oh uh, yeah I'd, I'd be glad when i was there it was also a lot grittier it seems like when i leave places they get cleaned up uh, but <laughs> but when i was I'm there it, it was it was definitely the uh it had an image as a real party school unfortunately i was a serious student so i could only i graduated in 3 years cuz i didn't think i could hold on any longer without just sort of either being in jail or losing my mind so uh, <laughs> i was there in the go go drug days the 80 you know the, the late 70s early 80s when it was the cartel days so it was an absolutely fabulous time to be there in terms of of sort of having ideas for for stories and characters right now it's actually hard to get into and it's gotten a lot fancier um which is sort of unfortunate in a way i liked kind of the, <laughs> the 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 ghetto image but um but but yes please do call it's it's an interesting spot i went from there to a very fancy law school so it was quite a, a shift <laughs> i was just there, was actually, that? right down the road from uh, the school on gable um, mm -hmm. We stayed stayed on Gable when I was in Miami for a couple of days uh, the other week. Oh well, yeah, it's, 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 set, it's, yeah. Did you see the cruise ship go by? No, the, couldn't the make it out. The floating wreck dive. It was um, it, yeah. It was lights on the horizon for a while there. It was like slowly going that way to that way. It's gone now. Have to you squint. Got, you got a tough a tough tough job there, man. <laughs> Well, does does Doug Pratt have any uh, uh, anything to give us from his perch at a bar stool? He was ribbing you about banjos playing, and then he <laughs> says he loves he loves Edinburgh, um, but uh, otherwise, I think he's just getting drunk and not saying anything too intelligent yet. Nothing wrong with that. I can say that because he because he's he's my friend and co writer in a series, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, also, uh, you work with him, and I imagine it's the reason that you bothered to pack a microphone on a trip to St. Martin. Uh, you're doing a podcast with Doug Pratt, is that correct? Well, yeah, yeah, the Two yeah. Authors Chat Show, 
with two uh, authors chat show that sounds it's absolutely very british great. <laughs> it's, it's very, very well put together really good sound yeah it's good editing just the whole thing we can't do that Thanks. on this show because we're live you know <laughs> you're recorded and cut and edited and pasted and voiceovers and all yeah we can't do that yeah <laughs> have, you, uh, have you had thacker on yet or is that a future one no we had yeah, Thacker. he was got him on uh, episode two yeah four just came out today with aj stewart who hey if you wanted someone in an exotic climbs aj should have been on tonight he's in fiji right now oh, um, oh. yeah yeah because we i'm currently writing my part of faceless uh which i'll be handing over to nick here um by the end of the week hopefully I um, tagged him, but uh, it's like six o'clock in the morning. In yeah, the time difference is we were trying to have. He ain't a, gonna be uh, up that early. Yeah, we were trying to chat the other day about something, and it's uh, it just didn't work. So, um, but yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning the podcast. It's been a lot of fun, actually. We we kind of didn't know what we were getting into, but we got this uh, chap Sam in in the UK who edits it for us, and we get to the end of the show, and we're like, "Well, that was fun, but I bet it's a mess." <laughs> and he and he plays it back, and it's kind of like, "Huh." Well, that sounds all right. <laughs> He's a freaking genius, I think, this chap, Sam. But um, yeah, we've had a few guests on. We have a friend of mine, James Hinchcliffe, who's a former IndyCar driver, and he's now a commentator for NBC Sports. And he was also on Dancing with the Stars a couple of years ago and was runner-up. So and he's a really entertaining guy. And he uh, spends the summer in, or spends the winter, I should say, in the Bahamas. So he, uh, we chatted to him from his place in the Bahamas. That was a really interesting show too, yeah. Yeah, it, the next AJ's is really good because um, he's uh, he's a great storyteller. Go figure. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, next in two weeks, they come out every two weeks. And uh, the next one is uh, another mate of mine from racing who is he's hilarious. He's a former uh, pro hockey player who uh, now coaches. Uh, he was Jackman for NASCAR. He went from hockey to being a jackman over the wall, you know, back when they were seven man um, crews and everything else. And he moved on to uh, coaching the teams. He runs track houses uh, over the wall crew and also has a splinter deal. Now he's written a book and uh, does uh, talks for people. And he's this huge, intimidating Canadian ice hockey player. And, uh, and he teaches how to, you know, manage with uh, empathy and what have you. It's pretty funny. So uh, it, it, that's a that's a fun show. That'll be out in a couple of weeks. But yeah, we'll have you now, all these, on at some point down the road. Your buddy, uh, if he's a huge hockey player, was he what they call an, an enforcer? Yeah, pretty pretty much. I give him shit at the beginning of the show. Like, <laughs> were you a particularly good skater? And he's like, no, not really. <laughs> so they would sick you on the guy who was good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just beat him to <laughs> <laughs> Hanson yeah. brothers from Slapshot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got about 10 people watching the show live right now on YouTube. And so far, uh, let's see who's commenting. Douglas, 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 Douglas. He's just making Douglas, rude comments. <laughs> yeah, he's just making rude comments. <laughs> Have another drink, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you're watching and you got a question for anybody, it, it's already 704. So now now is your time to jump on and, and hit us with a question on YouTube. Yeah, we're in overtime now. So if you if you got anything to say, just go to the chat. You have to be on YouTube, not on Facebook. We shared this on Facebook too, but you have to be on my YouTube channel, youtube.com oh, backslash Wayne Stennett. And uh, there you can join the chat. Uh, just a quick, quick question to Brit Nick. Do you know a guy named John Gorsline? Yeah. Uh, in racing? Yeah, I do, actually. Insurance yeah. guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, believe it or not, there's this crazy business where people insure race cars, which yeah. is like insanity. But he does a lot of other insurance, too. But I don't know if they're right. still doing it that way, but at, at, um, they used to do it. Uh, you could insure your race car. It wasn't cheap. <laughs> well he's down he lives was. right right down a few doors down from where i live so i figured you'd probably if i was an insurance broker for that kind of insurance it would cost <laughs> you the price of the car <laughs> it's gonna be destroyed and you, can, 
Well, you can't it, get insurance for a house in Florida, but you can get insurance for a race car, you know. Exactly. Well, you figure 40 cars start the race. There's only five, about five of them that get destroyed. So if you insured all 40 at uh, a decent rate, you're going to you're gonna make out in the end of the day. But yeah, tell him I said hi. I haven't spoken to him or seen him in years. I, but I, I yeah, see I him all the time. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Talladega and uh, Daytona and Atlanta excluded. Yeah, they don't insure those things. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> they don't insure cup cars um, at all. It was mm. open wheel racing where they were doing insurance and in probably sports cars, but uh, not a chance in NASCAR. <laughs> 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 uh, we should uh, mention the um, uh, the tropical author novels that are coming out soon, right? Well, Shameless did fantastic, um, yeah. and that came out. Uh, well, that's over a month ago now. That came out, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what's the next one? Priceless, which is uh, uh, July, uh, July fifth. Uh, no, it's before that, I think, Wayne. May. Um, it's May, I think. Yeah. Oh, May. Yeah, yeah that's right, May. And yeah. you've got uh, the the uh, the final edit is done on that. Have uh, all the changes been made? Not completely. It's close okay. though. Uh, Don's hogging it right now. Um, You'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> Take your time. I'm busy. Free beer <laughs> the, tomorrow. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Deborah Brown, Don, and myself did Priceless, and it's a novella, but actually it's come out. I think it's longer than Shameless, <laughs> 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 but we left it a novella. So, um, yeah, and it's a lot of fun. And then uh, Faceless, which is AJ Stewart, uh, myself, uh, Nick, and Chris Niles. And uh, that uh, that's coming out later this year, and I'm doing the third section of it, and then it'll go to Nick to uh, bring it home. And it's fun; it's really fun. Excellent, and I'm so thrilled, uh, Wayne. Uh, one of my characters I offered up to you to take out or do whatever you wanted with him. Yeah, but I, you, I, you, you didn't. You didn't take me up on I it. So I didn't now he's it. in faceless. Yep. I, oh, I refer to awesome. this guy as the anti Jesse. <laughs> that's awesome oh you're talking about uh this angler. is ang angler. angler yeah yeah are you ah uh, no wait you know what his real name is because nick gave me free reign to give him a real no, name no no he doesn't have a real name i know he, he does now you gave me free reign oh to, yeah yeah to name yeah him. yeah yeah no, yeah but don't don't say that part <laughs> you don't want me to you don't want me to tell you oh no, not on, yet. no no yeah it doesn't change the story any it doesn't oh. doesn't give anything away. Oh, I think it's fun. If if you read Deep Devil, Angler's going to have a name, but you have to buy Faceless to find out. Oh, you're is. killing me. I want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well played. There we go. <laughs> All right. Do we did did anyone bite? Do we do we have a a query? No, just Doug making comments. <laughs> right, Doug, well. Doug said, "Britnick, aren't you writing a book with a handsome fellow from Memphis?" <laughs> <laughs> we're writing a book called missing in the keys together so that's what uh, doug is uh is referring to and he just had a uh great uh his havana sunrise just came out yes um not that long ago at the beginning of last month i think it's been out a month and uh it did really really well i think his uh his best one to yet is, uh, i think it's it's still in the in the top oh yeah uh categories yeah doug's doing I, great i yeah. was doing pretty well until steve becker came out with a book and knocked me out of <laughs> don't you love that and that yeah. guy that guy who brought out fish on a little while back that thing is still hanging out of the i know charts. it's so sticky it, everybody uh, it, it just went into kendo unlimited so it's going to stick there for a little while longer <laughs> you and cap next those, time i those put orange a book out cap, next time I put cap, a cap has like 20 that are in the top top 50 of sea adventures oh he's yeah. he's killing it. it's great speaking of cap i just got an email from him in response to a query i sent earlier today um next month may 2nd is will be the third anniversary of this show uh, it'll be season four episode one and cap daniels is going to be on the show with us nice great it's getting to be a regular thing now he's on the very first one he was on the, the first show of the second season first show of the third season so we're bringing him back maybe you he'll can, fly in again yeah maybe he'll fly there and you can pin him down on ruthless <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that that's it if we the, could drag him an to ulterior the, motive <laughs> get him to the tiki bar at nink and we'll get him to write it <laughs> hmm. well by then it'll be a little too late now that's gonna happen one day yeah we'll get oh it. yeah 
I think I think it'll be a great story. Yeah, very cool. Well, you got anybody have anything else? Any, any more big announcements? Anything coming up? In I the got the, I got Burning Summer coming out at the end of this month. That's my next one. It's the next new, new Nora summer. Summer's book. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's with my ARC readers right now. Where's um, just, my ARC? You were going to send me an ARC link. I did send it to you. Listen, I you. Didn't. So this guy <laughs> in Virginia. So there's something about the border of Virginia that doesn't let things like technology come on in there. So <laughs> he's, And I'm not the only one. It's not a St. Martin Island thing. Let me tell you, because Deborah Brown keeps getting uh, sending him you stuff. And, and he's like, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. They just put fiber like, out in front of the house. So get that. Then you can't. Give me when he when he's saying well, what's fiber, the other end connected to? yeah yeah he <laughs> just <laughs> you mean bits of yarn or like what what he, when he's talking about fiber he's talking hey, about hey. a box of raisin bran that's what they just put out front that's the closest thing they get to fiber in virginia well you are familiar with the war between the states right so um you know war of northern aggression the northern <laughs> aggression yeah <laughs> actually i had people on both sides so mm. yeah so did i my my yeah. mother's family came originally from Ohio. My father's family came originally from Virginia. I have a great great grandfather on both sides that were both in the same battle at Appomattox. Oh wow! And That's cool. Oh wow! One was injured by artillery, and the other one was an artilleryman. Ugh. The the odds are astronomical that one calls the other, but. Yeah. that's just romantic as hell man yeah. <laughs> make a great book my family just kind of slinked away and went you guys have at it <laughs> no we ran your family out in 1776 <laughs> and again in 1812 yeah. and, look, and, and look what you've done with the place <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> all righty well is it is it dinner time i guess it's getting it close. To, it's it getting is for me. All righty. So let's go ahead and wind this thing down. And uh, I want to thank you guys, for everybody, for being on here. It's been a lot of fun, lively discussion, as always. And uh, before we get before we cut out, has anybody got any, a new release coming? I, I, I did mine. You did <laughs> yours. Anybody else? Nope. Maybe okay. maybe August. We'll we'll see. Um, maybe august that'd be cool yeah i well yeah my my big news is um i got i thought i was kind of not fancy enough for them but i applied to this writer's residency in alaska um which i got accepted to it's kind of fancy i thought i wasn't maybe literary enough for them or whatever but it turns out that the person who started the residency is a mystery writer so I ended up getting accepted. So I'm going to Alaska for a month next week. Wow. Um, cool. Oh, and, right. It wasn't uh, cold enough for you. Yeah, I was going to say. I know, right? snow. So, let, so let me go even further north. So <laughs> there is where I plan. The work I plan to do there is finishing the third grace book. So depending on when that gets sorted, it could be July, I hope, or maybe August. Great. Super. Yeah. Excellent. All right, thank you guys for being here, and uh, it's been it's been a blast. When not, when we close out, don't exit the room because we got a little after party going after that. But anyway, thanks for being on here, and uh, thanks again to our supporters: uh, Tropical Authors, Pirate Radio, Down Island Press, Down Island Publishing, Aurora Publicity, and How Not to Sail. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> good night everybody see you guys thank you